Hello everyone, welcome to another wonderful physics practical class on mechanics. My name is Mr. Drew, your regular host on this program. In today's class, we're looking at the following apparatus to carry out a mechanics experiment. Metal rule, optical pins, beaker, set of masses, 50 grams, about 5 pieces, retort stand, plasticine, which is just like the chewing gum, and then the optical pins. We also have the retort stand, we also have a firm support as well as uh, a mass angle. The mass angle could be weightless and it could as well have uh, some uh, a mass attached to it. it, could be 50 grams and so on. So, in the course of this class, we're going to look at an assemblage comprising of all the apparatus which I mentioned earlier. Uh, coincidentally, this, this apparatus is similar to an experiment which I performed some years back for some of my students and is actually coming back to play in one of the uh, prominent uh, uh, external exam that is currently ongoing uh, in the country. So as you can see on the images being displayed, you can see set of masses. You can as well see the retort stand which is holding the meter rule as well as uh, a horizontally balanced uh, meter rule which is being held by the clamp and then you can see there I'm trying to attach a mass, a mass to the metal rule which is provided and you can see the beaker of water you can see the uh, the G clamp which is holding the metal rule to a table which is also a rigid support you can see there I'm trying to uh, you know tie up the rope uh, attach it to the mass anger and display it you know as uh, expected during the course of the of the particle so basically um, at the start of the of experiments, you are expected to mount a metal rule on a rigid support using your G-clamp. As you can see, that's a G-clamp which is holding the metal rule. Now, the metal rule can be positioned at some distance from the edge. Uh, you expect the examiner to instruct you on where to, where to stamp or where to uh, hold or grip that metal rule to the, to the support. And then, you have also the set of masses. Like I said, you have the beaker of water which is uh, quite useful in this experiment as well. And then you have the optical pin. The optical pin is attached to the end of the metal rule. That optical pin is supposed to be a pointer which measures the distance of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the deflection along that vertically erected metal rule on the retort stand. Okay, so as it goes, uh, most uh, the, the, instruction, the first instruction is that attach that metal rule or the mass rather attach it to the metal rule okay and you can if you're lucky you can have a, a point where you can attach that uh, the mass hanger onto the metal rule if you're not you can get a rope attach it to the mass hanger and then put it at the exact point where it is expected to be mounted on the metal rule the instruction will be clear as to where exactly you are to mount that mass on the metal rule. Okay, so as you see, I'm trying to demonstrate to you where and how to uh, position the, the mass hanger on the metal rule. Before you proceed, ensure that the metal rule that you are mounting on that retort stand is vertically positioned. Don't let it slant because any slanting position could affect your readings and ensure that that metal rule is kept vertically upright throughout the course of the experiment. It's very key so as to obtain a consistent, a consistent um, of values that will help you when you're plotting your graph and determining your slope as well as um, uh, stating your precautions. So it is very, very key. As you can see, I'm trying to put the rope on the, on the mass angle, okay? and then attaching it to a distance of about 30 centimeters from the point where it was clamped. The instruction will be clear as to the position where you should pull the mass anger on the, on the metal rule. Okay, as you can see, um, um, I'm trying to illustrate to you the various components of this uh, practical, which is the optical pin where it is positioned, the mass anger where I intend to pull it, I think it's about some 30 centimeters from the point where the metal rule was clamped to that support. Okay. Now the mass anger on its own is about 50 grams. Okay. So in case we have some 
experiment, the procedure that we instruct that you should use a mass hanger that is weightless or with a very insignificant uh, weight. Some could be as, as low as 5 grams, some could be as low as 7 grams, even less than 10 grams. As you can see, I have positioned uh, the, the, the mass hanger. You can see I held that, that uh, optical pin, I held it to the horizontally balanced metal rule with a tape. If you don't have a plasticine or if you have a chewing gum that you've already chewed, you can use it to hold on the, the pin onto the, onto the uh, horizontally balanced uh, metal rule. Okay? And then before I started taking my readings, before I even put the mass angle on the, on the horizontally balanced metal rule, I first noted my initial readings on the metal rule. I think from what I, the experiment I carried out was around 78.5 centimeters. Okay, and then the moment I put that mass angle of 50 grams on the horizontally balanced metal rule, the, the metal rule deflected downwards, and then the position on the metal rule changes. And it was reading around, I think, 60, 60.0 uh, uh, centimeters. But one thing that I need you to understand about this is the metal rule specifically has two calibrations on either side. So I am taking my readings from the ground. I am taking my readings from the ground, from the bottom of the of the of the of that uh, return stand, as you can see. And I'm reading it all through up. I'm not taking the other readings coming from uh, from the top end down to to the ground. Okay. So you need to specify exactly where you're starting your readings from. As you can see, I'm taking my readings from the bottom and. And I have already inserted all of the masses into, uh, into the, the, uh, the, the mass anger in batches of 50 grams. So altogether, I have about 250 grams. And I have gotten about, about five different readings for those different masses. And then the next thing I was doing is to experiment and see the effect of uptrust on the deflection of the metal rule. One thing you need to, you need to understand is that the, when the, mit, the mass is fully submerged in the water, the mass, the deflection of the metal rule is not the same as when it is not uh, submerged in the in, in water. As a matter of fact, it is it is the values are greater compared to when it is not submerged in water. As you can see, like the first reading I got when I put the 50 grams mass, I noticed it was it was uh, the, the uh, 50 grams mass. It was on 78. Uh, it was on 78 centimeters. But when I didn't put the uh, when I didn't put it inside when I when I put it inside water, it gave me a readings of about 80 centimeters. So also with the rest, the next one was 60 centimeters. When I put it inside, when I put the 100 grams of mass inside water, the deflection was a little bit higher. It gave me about 62 centimeters. So you don't expect the values to be the same all throughout the experiment. And then you need to be very careful with the way you arrange your setup. The setup must be rigid, must be firm. It's not something that you're going to allow um, a wind or drought to affect it. And that is one key precaution in this experiment. You should avoid drought by shutting the windows and closing the and closing uh, by shutting the windows and switching off the fan. As you can see, also one of the major precautions in this experiment as well is to what is to ensure that. The masses are added gently to in order to, to avoid setting the metal rule in oscillation. That is also very, very key. And then you ensure that the optical pin does not rest on the metal rule. That is also very, very important. Number four is that avoided parallax error when reading from the metal rule. This is also very key as to ensure an accurate and precise uh, result. And then you ensure that metal rule was clamped to a rigid support, not a support that and last but not least, just like I said in my previous uh, 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 precaution, is to avoid drought by closing the windows. I want to thank you all for listening to this broadcast. And remember to share the link with your friends, especially those that are writing the exam. And remember to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for listening. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye-bye.